Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. New York is one of the most visited cities in the world, with tons to see and do. When you're finished with the Statue of Liberty and the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Broadway is a great next stop. Known for hosting some of the best theater anywhere, this district of NYC is a can't-miss tourist destination. In honor of the Great White Way and its storied history, let's start by taking a look at Ms. Mojo's list of iconic Broadway dance numbers. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 iconic Broadway dance numbers. When I'm through, then I'm through, and I'm through, toodaloo. For this list, we'll be looking at the most outstanding choreography from a variety of musical theater shows that are worthy of a standing ovation. Even if the dance originated on screen, it must have also been adapted for the stage. Which Broadway ensemble would you love to join? Number 20, The Room Where It Happens, Hamilton. No one really knows how the game is played, the art of the trade, how the sausage gets made. We just assume that it happens, but no one else is in the room where it happens. Every generation has its groundbreaking musical. In the 2010s, that was Hamilton. A significant part of its legacy is owed to choreographer Andy Blankenbuehler. When he reinterpreted Lin-Manuel Miranda's words as movement, the results were magnetic. If you watch the ensemble during Yorktown, you'll see that their actions narrate the story and the lyrics. Blankenbuehler also divulged that the room where it happens was one of the more challenging numbers. However, it was his favorite, and it's not hard to see why. It's one of the show's jazzier numbers, and a total showstopper that sets the tone for the remainder of the story and Burr's mindset. Watching these dances in the room where it happens is an unrivaled experience. Number 19, Turkey Lurkey Time, Promises Promises. It's Turkey Lurkey Time, he's really home to stay. Originally choreographed by Michael Bennett, this underrated gem takes place at the office holiday party where three employees perform for their colleagues. It was a late addition to the production after their initial Act 1 finale flopped during the out-of-town tryouts in Boston. Bennett reworked the number into this fun, high-energy routine that really keeps its performers and the audience on their toes. Especially Michael Bennett's work was, was uh, in this piece was uh, really breaking ground because he really started doing that seamless thing, you know, the musical interludes, and all of this had it was justifiable. Apparently it was quite challenging to learn, thanks partly to its ever-quickening pace but the performers dance with such vigor and joy that you'd never be able to tell how difficult it was. It was fun, silly, cheeky, and jaw-dropping all at once. The number more than earned its status as an iconic Broadway dance. Number 18, You Can't Stop the Beat, Hairspray. You Can't Stop the Beat is undoubtedly among musical theater's most joy-inducing, uplifting, and rambunctious finales. It marks the time where the whole cast comes together to celebrate a new era, togetherness, and acceptance. Strong messages like that certainly deserve cheerful choreography that goes harder than many other finales. As more people join the dance, the scene becomes bigger, bolder, and even more beautiful. Seeing the ensemble unite to bring the number home is so satisfying and utterly thrilling. You know a dance is extraordinary if even the Von Tussles can't resist joining in. We 
can't make it through the scene without grinning from ear to ear. Now that is how you end a show. Number 17, Electricity, Billy Elliot. I'm on free. I'm free. This coming of age musical about a young kid who discovers his love of dance more than delivers on unforgettable dance sequences. Billy's angry dance is incredibly powerful. Additionally, his expressing yourself duet with Michael is joyous. However, the elegant, graceful, and gravity-defying electricity is in a league of its own. Billy combines ballet with gymnastics to relate just how much dancing means to him. That sentiment bursts out of each step and every backflip. Throughout the daring routine, the performer is pushed both physically and emotionally. Billy's passion for the art form leaves us with chills and a desire to pick up a pair of dance shoes and experience that electricity for ourselves. Number 16, Slap That Bass, Crazy For You. If you could also friend me, if I could only get me someone slap that bass. Yes. Happiness is not a riddle when I'm listening to that big bass. <laughs> Is there anything better than a dance number inspired by the treasured golden age of musicals? That's exactly what choreographers like Susan Stroman give us whenever shows like Crazy For You come back into our lives. While we could name several favorites, Slap That Bass is arguably one of the most astonishing and impressive numbers of them all. The title refers to a popular style of music from the early 20th century. However, the performers take things a step further by embodying the instruments. The playfulness and the commitment to the movement puts us in a good mood every time. This creative and high-energy choreography truly slaps. Number 15, Shall We Dance, The King and I. Pop quiz, what are the counts for a polka? If you said one, two, three, you'd be correct. One, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and shall we dance? One, two, three, and on a bright cloud of music, shall we fly? One, two, three, and for many musical theater fans, this number is why we know that by heart. Shall we dance marks a new step in Anna's relationship with the king. They both explain exactly what romance means to them. As Anna teaches the king to dance, you can feel the sense that they're growing closer to each other than ever. One throw, that bell will go clang, high on the target, and wham! One shot, one gunshot, and... It seems like they cover every square inch of the stage as they glide around together. The upbeat melody, fast-paced steps, and the rising romantic tension make this one of musical theater's most recognizable dance moments. Number 14, Big Spender, Sweet Charity. Less is more with Bob Fosse, and nothing shows that more than this number from Sweet Charity. In this scene, the dance hostesses are trying to entice their clients, and every tiny isolation speaks volumes. How's about a few fun laughs, fun laughs, fun laughs? The song is set to a slow beat, which is meant to give us a striptease vibe. And every tiny movement draws us in closer and closer. And after all, isn't that the point? There are also moments where everything speeds up and our hearts race even faster. By the end of the song, you just might feel like a million bucks. Fun, last, good time. Fun, last, good time. 
How's about it, Palsy? Yeah. Number 13, Lori Makes Up Her Mind, AKA Dream Ballet, Oklahoma. Did you know that this number may have inspired the Dream Ballet motif itself? Talk about setting the bar high. Dreams of anxiety are not like a circus. They're full of horror and ominous uh, doom and so forth. In Oklahoma, this extended sequence follows Lori as she grapples with being caught in a complicated love triangle. It's a visual masterpiece that highlights the incredible talents of its performers while taking the audience on an emotional roller coaster. The provocative piece is visually stunning and tragically heartbreaking. Even during its darkest moments, we can't help but lean forward to ensure we don't miss any of it. It's one of the genre's most affecting moments. Who knew that something so haunting and nightmarish could also be so beautiful? Number 12, Mine Hair, Cabaret. You have to understand the way I am, Mine Hair. Since Bob Fosse is a bona fide dance legend, narrowing down his most iconic routines is nearly impossible. But Mine Hair from Cabaret is arguably one of his most striking masterpieces. You'll never turn the vinegar to chair. So I do what I do. The isolations are breathtaking, the use of chairs is ingenious, and the way he plays with the tempo is stunning. Plus, the core strength required for some of those more awkward positions is insane. The dance celebrates female empowerment by having every single performer own the sensual number with confidence. Fosse was never afraid to experiment or push the envelope when it came to crafting his now world-renowned choreography. Years later, we're still blown away by the results. It's so hypnotic, and we're definitely not better off without it. <laughs> Number 11, The Barn Dance, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Anyone with a penchant for Golden Age musicals is probably a huge fan of this dance. Piece by piece, I worked out the number in the rehearsal hall by adding equipment and so forth. The dance number, I think we started like um, four weeks before we started to film. And most of it was spent on that barn dance. The spectacular version from the movie is definitely worth highlighting. But at the end of the day, there's nothing quite like seeing this dance battle play out live on stage. This is partner dancing at its finest. The explosive choreography is ambitious and requires the utmost trust between the pairs. To make things more complicated, the female dancers switch partners throughout. Not only do you have to be a stellar dancer, but the stamina, athleticism, and flexibility required are next level. This timeless number still continues to stun today. Number 10, Ballet Sequence, An American in Paris. You could hardly make a list about iconic Broadway dances without dedicating at least one entry to the work of Gene Kelly, Dance Extraordinaire. Not only did he star in the 1951 Best Picture winner that inspired this stage musical, but he choreographed the film's elegant 17-minute long climax. The dance combines modern ballet with the classic choreography of the glamorous Hollywood Golden Age, retelling the story of Lisa and Jerry's tumultuous relationship set to the backdrop of 1940s Paris. Not only is this dance iconic, but without it, most of our entries wouldn't even exist. And luckily for us, it made it into the 21st century Broadway version that was adapted from the film by Christopher Wielden as well. <music> Number 9, 
Number nine, anything goes, anything goes. Imagine if all of high society shared gossip with a side of energetic tap dance. This number playfully pokes fun at various scandals from the Depression era, since it has such a catchy melody we're practically compelled to tap our toes. The ensemble, led by nightclub singer Reno Sweeney, launch into an animated dance break that rocks harder than a ship on a stormy night. Actress is also expected to still have enough breath to keep dancing and belt out those money notes. While you'll need to be in top form to pull this one off, success means you're part of a total showstopper that has rightfully gone down in Broadway history. <laughs> Number 8. The Jellicle Ball Cats. Jellicle cats come out tonight. Jellicle cats come one, come all. Cats is one of the longest running Broadway musicals, which might come as a surprise considering it's approximately two hours of people slinking around the stage pretending to be, well, cats. <laughs> The late, great Jillian Lynn definitely wasn't kittening around when she choreographed this difficult stage routine, which is a positively marvelous piece that comes towards the end of the first act. We'd apologize for all the puns, but we'd have been barking to miss this perfect opportunity. Number 7, Step in Time, Mary Poppins. A song that uses its lyrics as choreography is practically begging you to get up and join in. But when you realize it's actually about 10 minutes of vigorous choreography, you may want to leave it to the pros. However, it's incredible to think that Dick Van Dyke pulled off this high stamina routine with no dance background whatsoever. It's a lively piece that's both magical on screen and on stage. While we're all out of breath just watching the chimney sweeps, Mary Poppins takes center stage to show everyone how it's done. Number 6. Seize the Day, Newsies <laughs> It's certainly impressive watching the cast do their flips and tricks all over the stage. Fans of the show will be thrilled to know that the show's choreographer, Christopher Gatelli, released a less acrobatic version of the routine so anyone can get up and dance. Although you'll still need quite a bit of room. At this point in the show, the Newsies have decided to take a stand, and their highly energetic routines reflect their determination to make the world realize that they're here to stay and ready to seize the day. <laughs> Number 5. Audition, 42nd Street This is classic Broadway at its finest. The curtain only rises a little as the show begins, but it's enough to get our attention. First, we see the dancers' feet, then legs, and so on until you get the full glitz and glamour of Broadway. Let's go! Once the curtain is up, we're whisked away to the world of auditions where everyone is dancing their hearts out. Watching these performers dance in unison is stunning, and the sound of tap shoes hitting the stage in perfect precision is just so satisfying. Number 6. 
Number four, the bottle dance, Fiddler on the Roof. Although some may assume this is a traditional Jewish folk dance, it actually stemmed from the mind of choreographer and director Jerome Robbins. As research for the show, he attended Jewish weddings and festivals and found the way the men danced rather fascinating. One man in particular was mimicking a drunk person with a bottle on his head. This caught Robbins' eye, which ended up inspiring his choreography. The dance requires incredible levels of precision and perfect unison, and almost makes you want to try it out for yourself. Number 3, Cell Block Tango, Chicago. All that jazz perfectly sets up the musical's tone. And all that jazz, I'm gonna bruise my knees and roll my stockings down. And all that jazz. However, Chicago's big showstopper is hands down cell block tango. During the number, the six merry murderesses of the Cook County Jail recount the events that landed them behind bars. When I was washing the blood off my hands, I even knew they were dead. They had it coming. They had it They do so with some of the most sultry and powerful choreography to ever hit the stage. While every woman gets her chance to shine, the moment they all come together is the embodiment of empowerment. Of course, thanks to the magic of cinema, the 2002 film version took this to a class of its own. But without its stage predecessors and Fosse's one-of-a-kind choreography, that would have never been possible. We can't be the only ones who dreamt of appearing in this number, right? I bet you, you would have done the same. You'd pop that gum Single one my more time. Ten times. Number 17, this Artistic eagle. differences. Number 2, The Dance at the Gym, West Side Story. Uncle, uncle, go! We're straight away introduced to the sharks and the jets in the prologue, with its stunning ballet-like choreography where dance is used to represent gang rivalry. Later, however, the adults hope to end the rivalry with a dance, but the only people it brings together are Tony and Maria. It soon turns into a huge dance-off, and we're all for it. It's colorful, it's energetic, and if it doesn't make you want to mambo, then we suggest you go rewatch it when you're done with this video. Mambo! But that isn't the only high-energy number we love from the show. The Sharks and their friends more than deliver in the iconic America dance scene, too. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Shaking the Blues Away, Holiday Inn. Triple Threat isn't enough to describe these performers. Everybody say yeah, Kinky Boots. Let us hear you say yeah if you love this number as much as we do. Too Darn Hot, Kiss Me Kate. The cast always turns up the heat with this showstopper of a dance. <laughs> Whipped Into Shape, Legally Blonde the Musical. They're singing, dancing, and jumping rope. Anyone else feel exhausted just watching? I want you with me to shake when I say jump and I'll hide. You know you're doing it right when you start to cry. If you don't look like you should, you got to whip it, whip it, whip it, go. I know it's game till you're whipped into shape. 
Time Warp, The Rocky Horror Show. All together now, it's just a jump to the left. Number one, one reprise, a chorus line. From the opening scene, a chorus line promises the finest dance sequences filled with passion, vigor, and ambitious choreography we'd never dare to try. Five, six, seven, eight! And the showstopper finale is indeed a singular sensation and a thrilling combination, too. One singular sensation, every little step she takes. We feel like we know these performers well by this point in the show, but now they're all dressed alike and moving in unison as one chorus line. The director, Michael Bennett, hoped that audiences would leave feeling like these people deserved more than the chorus line. One smile and suddenly nobody else. As we watch those famous high kicks as the show comes to a close, they may be supporting actors to that audience, but to us, they'll always be the stars. While Broadway is, of course, famous for its dancing, it might be even more renowned for its music. However, there have to be some songs that don't get all the love and attention they deserve. Let's listen to a few of them with this list of underappreciated Broadway songs. Just me behind my door. It isn't what I have, it's only what I have in store. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underappreciated Broadway songs. That's how For this list, we'll be looking at the most underrated musical gems that deserve a big round of applause. Which one of these songs is your favorite? Number 10, Without Love, Hairspray. Oh, Tracy, they can keep us from kissing, but they can't stop us from singing. Once I was a selfish fool who never understood. Hairspray is a show that manages to find hope and comedy in some of life's heaviest moments. At one point in the story, protagonist Tracy Turnblad and a handful of other characters find themselves in trouble after protesting racism. What eventually follows is a song called Without Love, where Tracy, her love interest Link, her BFF Penny, and Penny's beau Seaweed sing as a quartet. The tune centers on how life and all its meaning are obsolete without the presence of love. It's filled with rich similes, lots of personality, and even some comedy that set it apart. Like a week that's only Mondays, only ice cream, never Sundays. Like a circle with no center, like a door lock, do not enter. Along with Run and Tell That, Without Love needs, well, a lot more love. Number 9, Shadowland, The Lion King. Shadowland, the leaves have fallen. One of the best things about the stage adaptation of The Lion King is that it gives the character of Nala more agency. During the second act, she makes a massive sacrifice by traveling away from the Pride Lands to seek assistance, escape Scar's horrific dictatorship, and find a new home. I can't stay here, my family, but I'll be As Rafiki and the other lionesses support her decision, they all follow her lead in performing Shadowland. Journey, 
As you can imagine, the result is a deeply haunting and impactful moment, and it leaves a mark on listeners that remains after The Last Note plays. So why exactly isn't it on everybody's radar? <laughs> Number 8. I Didn't Plan It, Waitress Go ahead, throw your rocks at me From your little glass house And then take off running You're no better than me One of the many themes explored in Waitress is judgment. The musical does an excellent job of featuring the characters in indiscriminate situations that are way more nuanced than they seem. For instance, supporting character Becky is caught making out with her manager, Cal. I didn't plan it, taking back what's been taken for granted, and I can't stand it. This is made even more complicated by the fact that they're both married to other people. During her solo, I Didn't Plan It, she reveals that while she's responsible for her actions, she's also human. Much like When He Sees Me, it's an empathetic and compassionate number that shows how embracing imperfection can set one free. He's what if when he sees me? What if he doesn't like it? What if he runs the other way and I can't hide from me? It doesn't often get the same attention as Waitress's other songs like She Used to Be Mine, but it should. Someday. Number 7. Do You Love Me? Fiddler on the Roof New World Love Golden Do you love me? Do I what? Fiddler on the Roof is often regarded as one of the most important shows in the musical theater canon. With iconic songs like Tradition and Matchmaker Matchmaker, it's no surprise that it's so loved. However, even the most celebrated productions have numbers that deserve more praise. Take, for example, Tevia and Golda's duet, Do You Love Me? Maybe it's indigestion. Golda, I'm asking you a question. Do you love me? It starts off with the former asking his wife a simple question and turns into a bittersweet tune about the longevity of love. After 25 years of marriage, the two prove to each other that their love is there, even if it doesn't always seem like it. Surprisingly tender and intimate, it may not be Fiddler's most popular song, but boy does it have plenty of heart. After 25 years, it's nice to know. Number 6. One Short Day, Wicked. One short day in the Emerald City. Libraries, palaces, museums, these are just a few Emerald City attractions mentioned in the oft-overlooked but incredibly amazing Wicked song, One Short Day. As BFFs Glinda and Alphaba play tourists in the bright, shiny green metropolis, the tune whisks listeners away on a grand yet quick adventure. There are buildings tall as quacks with trees, dress salons, libraries, palaces, museums, a hundred strong. Indeed, musical theater legend Stephen Schwartz's spellbinding orchestrations and whimsical lyrics are a pure delight. It goes without saying, but it's a can't-skip track on the musical's original Broadway cast recording. However, it does leave us with one very important and pressing question. What exactly is a Quoxwood tree? We're happy to keep wondering, as long as we can shine a light on the incredible number that is one short day. Number 5. We Both Reached for the Gun, Chicago Mr. Billy Flynn in the press conference rang. Notice how his mouth never moves. 
Almost. Where'd you come from? Mississippi. The name on everybody's lips has indeed been Roxy, but we're here to ask you to give a more underrated Chicago gem a round of applause. We Both Reached for the Gun is one of the show's most clever and fun numbers, and more than deserves the spotlight. It's so defensible. After all, it's basically one part press conference and one part vaudevillian spectacle. What more could you want? Facing murder charges, Roxy Hart is coached by her lawyer Billy Flynn, creating an innocent persona as hungry reporters watch on. How you feeling? Very frightened. Are you sorry? Are you kidding? What's your statement? She plays the dummy to his imaginary ventriloquist self as the two give him the old razzle-dazzle. Oh yes, oh yes, we can't wait to hit replay on this entertaining little number. Both reached for the Number 4. Hurricane, Hamilton. In the eye of a hurricane, there is quiet for just a moment. The yellow sky. By now, every track featured in Hamilton seems to be a certified smash hit. However, there are still some songs that need a little bit more love. Chief among them is Hurricane. I wrote my way out of hell, I wrote my way to revolution. I was louder than the clack in the bell. I wrote Eliza, love letters until she fell. I wrote about the Constitution and defended it well. The Act Two song is one of the show's finest, but also one of its least talked about. Following Alexander Hamilton's affair with Mariah Reynolds, the Founding Father sees his personal and professional life at risk and is forced to do some damage control. He sings about the calm before a storm, recalls his childhood struggles, and ultimately decides to go public with his mistake via the Reynolds pamphlet. It gradually builds in intensity, perfectly setting the scene for the turbulence that's about to unfold. I'll write my way out. Write everything down for us. Number 3. Will I Rent? Will I lose my dignity? Will someone care? Jonathan Larson's musical Rent has earned its spot in musical theater history by pushing boundaries and shaking up Broadway. The production is full of emotional and affecting numbers like Halloween. When single frames from one magic night forever flicker in close up on the 3D IMAX of my mind. But perhaps the most underappreciated is Will I. During a support group meeting for people living with AIDS, the attendees express their distress and anxieties about what the end of their lives will look like. Will I lose my dignity? Will I lose my dignity? The lyrics are simple and cut straight to the point. Larson wrote it after multiple sessions at an actual support group, where he heard patients' stories. Question after question, the song packs a strong punch and tugs at our heartstrings. Number 2. Wishing You Were Somehow Here Again, The Phantom of the Opera Wishing you were somehow here again Wishing you were somehow near. The Phantom of the Opera is spectacular musical theater at its finest. Of course, it's chock full of grand numbers like Notes Prima Donna. And there's no shortage of power. Just look at Think of Me. <laughs> But the show also finds time to ground itself in personal moments, and it's one of these we wish got more recognition. We 
During Wishing You Were Somehow Here Again, chorus girl turned prima donna Christine Daae goes to visit her late father at the cemetery amid a difficult time. While she longs for her dad's help, her words perfectly embody the complexity and nuance of grief. It's a touching and somber piece that digs deep and leaves no dry eyes behind. Help me Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. He was my boyfriend, Young Frankenstein. This tune always leaves us in stitches. He was a monster and a beast. His midnight bangings never ceased. It didn't faze me in the least. He was my boyfriend. If only Quartet, The Little Mermaid. It deserved to make more of a splash. I give my life up to me. Abandoned in Bandon, once. So good you can't just listen to it once. Too many complications and not enough hand in glove. And not enough hand in glove. Abandoned in Bandon! Woman, the Pirate Queen. A powerful but oft forgotten ballad fit for a queen. I have my dreams, I have made plans, I see horizons wide as a man's. Must I be nothing till I'm some man's wife? Easy to be hard, hair. A captivating song that's perfect for the stage, the big screen, or your playlist. Number one, a little fall of rain, Eponine's death, Les Miserables. Don't you fret, Monsieur Marius, I don't feel any pain. A little fall of rain can hardly hurt me now. Hear us out, Les Mis isn't all doom and gloom. Underrated songs like Master of the House offer some relatively lighter fare. Still, there's something about those gut-wrenching numbers that we can't help but love. Take, for example, A Little Fall of Rain. It isn't just a melody and lyrics. It's a confession, a goodbye, and a tearjerker. You would live a hundred years if I could show you how. I won't desert you now. During the climactic barricade scene, Eponine is fatally wounded. Dying in Marius' embrace, she confesses her feelings for him through this duet. The number joins the ranks of other poignant yet neglected ones, like empty chairs at empty tables. I can While Eponine's On My Own is considered her big moment, A Little Fall of Rain is her most criminally overlooked. And rain, and rain. We'll, make the we'll make the flower grow. Now, I don't know about you, but when I exercise, I need to be listening to music to keep my energy up. And you had better believe that Broadway has a ton of songs that are perfect to get you going for a trip to the gym or even a night out on the town. Let's get hyped with these Broadway pump-up songs. I have confidence the world can all be mine. They'll have to agree I have confidence in me. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Broadway pump-up songs. Open it up, let it in, you for 
this list, we'll be looking at musical theater tracks that raise you up, spread the love, and make you feel like you can seize the day. The song doesn't have to originate on Broadway, but it does have to have been adapted for the stage at some point. What Broadway Jam is a must-have on your pump-up playlist? Number 20. Gimme 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 A Man After Midnight, Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia is one big party from start to finish, but nothing gets you on your feet faster than the opening bars of this song. It's Sophie's bachelorette party, and everyone is letting loose and breaking out their best moves. Clearly, Madonna jumped on the hype bandwagon, as she personally saw permission from the songwriters to use the intro for Hung Up in 2005. And who can blame her? This song will never fail to bring out your inner party animal. Just point us to the nearest glitter ball. Number 19, Get Down, 6. Sitting here all alone on a throne in a palace that I happen to own. Bring me some pheasant, keep it on the bone. This herstory remix is filled with feminist power anthems that make us feel like we could rule the world, but none make us want to get in reformation quite like Anne of Cleves' Get Down. Done so hard that I'm causing a sensation. Okay, ladies, let's get in reformation. In it, she celebrates living her best life, funded by the generous divorce settlement. Think if Destiny's Child's Independent Women was written during the Tudor period and had a Broadway makeover. To be fair, if we had a palace in Richmond, a party lifestyle, and no Henry VIII in our lives, we'd be celebrating too. No one tells me I need a rich man doing my thing in my palace in Richmond! <laughs> The song's infectious beat makes us want to jump up and get down with these queens. I get, I get down. Ow. Cause I'm the queen of the cast. Number 18, To Life, Fiddler on the Roof. To life, to life, let I am. To life. This song is quite literally a celebration of life. Not just that, it's about celebrating the good things during times of adversity. From the moment it begins, we simply can't resist bopping along. It's so joyous and plucky that we just want to join the party. Despite the underlying apprehension of what the future might bring, the happy melody, positive message, and overall good vibes come together flawlessly to create a number that never fails to put massive grins on our faces. To us and our good fortune, be happy, be healthy, love life. And if our good fortune never comes, kiss to whatever comes, drink the party. And dare we say it, it's so energizing that we might even be tempted to try our hand at some of those more ambitious moves. We'd raise our glass to this song anytime. L'chaim. To love! Number 17, Big Fun, Heather's The Musical. While Heather's is a dark comedy, there are a few numbers that manage to shine a light through the darkness. Sure, Candy Store's lyrics aren't so sweet, but its rhythm sure is. Honey, what you waiting for? Welcome to my candy store. And the 17 reprise sends the audience back into the world with an uplifting message and a spring in their step. Still, nothing is as big fun as, well, big fun. In this 80s dance music inspired track, the teens abandon their inhibitions and go wild at an unsupervised house party. The house is ours. It's time for big fun. Big fun. Let's use their showers. That sounds like big fun. Big fun. Although things get a little out of control, there's no denying we could all sometimes use a reminder to just let go and enjoy life a little more. Number 16. Fame, fame.
If you're anything like us, you only need to hear those opening notes and you're already on your feet. Perhaps you've even grabbed a leotard and hastily put on some leg warmers. In the movie, the song compels the students to run out into the street and dance in traffic. <laughs> And not that we'd recommend doing that, we get it. It's so invigorating that we instantly want to drop everything, dance our hearts out, and sing at the top of our lungs. Indeed, the lyrics make us feel like we can do anything. The phenomenal and greatly missed Irene Cara really will live forever through this incomparable pump-up jam. Oh, that's me! Number 15, Don't Rain On My Parade, Funny Girl. Don't Tell me not to live, just sit and putter. Life's candy and the sun's a ball of butter. Don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. To be honest, you totally belt this rousing song whenever nobody's around. While everyone else is telling Fanny Bryce that it's a mistake to choose her man over her career, she continues to march to the beat of her own drum and couldn't care less what the others think. I gotta fly once, I gotta try once, only can die once, right, sir? Oh, life is juicy, juicy, and you see, I gotta have my bite, sir. This song is about tossing aside negativity and following your dreams. By the time you reach the end of this power ballad, watch out, world, because nobody is gonna rain on your parade. Number 14, Revolting Children, Matilda the Musical. We are revolting children living in revolting times. We sing revolting songs, we sing revolting parts. We'll be revolting children till our revolting time. Proving that you're never too young to stick it to the man, the kids reclaim this insulting title and turn it into their rebel yell. It's a clever play on words that turns the status quo on its head and makes listeners want to join their revolution. After all, we've all been there. Sometimes authority needs to be challenged, or people need to be called out. And this is the perfect song to fuel our confidence. When we're faced with any daunting situation, this song gives us the push we need to take action. Rebellion never sounded so good or felt quite as exhilarating. Number 13, 9 to 5, 9 to 5. You'll probably know this one from before it stays on the Great White Way, but thanks to Broadway, we get to fall in love with it all over again. Dolly Parton's famous song originated from the film of the same name, starring herself, Jane Fonda, and Lily Tomlin. Working Was written to expose gender inequality in the workplace, something that dominates our headlines still today. The dare we say underrated Broadway show expands on these ideas and gives you harmonies and kick-ass choreography for days. We love this song and everything it stands for. And it's just what we need to hear on a Monday morning to get us through another week. Number 12, Freak Flag, Shrek the Musical. Say, hey world, I'm different, and here I am, splinter. We all have days when we're just not feeling it, and we can often be our biggest and harshest critics. On those days, we'd recommend turning this song up to full volume and letting your freak flag fly. Jinji leads the ensemble in a number that celebrates unapologetically being yourself. Quirks, flaws, and all. Let your freak flag fly. Let 
As the song builds, the characters sing out their message even louder, and with a bucket load more enthusiasm. It's a powerful self-acceptance anthem with a catchy rhythm that's practically guaranteed to get those endorphins flowing. Who knew that a song about self-love sung by fairy tale characters was exactly what we needed? And it's a total banger, too. I won! I'm good! Get used to it! <laughs> Number 11, La Vie Bohème, Rent. La Vie Bohème. Two days of inspiration, playing hooky, making something out of nothing. The need to express, to communicate. Okay, Rent heads, who among us didn't dream about gathering our friends, pushing some tables together, and recreating this scene? This ode to the bohemian lifestyle promotes acceptance of others, a sense of community, and just living life in a way that makes you happy. If Rent taught us anything, it's that there's no day but today. So go ahead and live your best life, even if it goes against the grain. The song gives off a chaotic, positive energy, and we are so here for it. All we're saying is it takes a lot of self-restraint not to jump on a table when this song plays, especially for that final fist pump. Viva la vie poem! Number 10, Revenge Party, Mean Girls. not a party without dessert. And Janice, Damien, and Katie are about to serve up some sweet justice at their revenge party. What's Regina doing? What's Regina wearing? Is she dating Aaron? Regina, Regina! This song drives forward the infamous revenge plot where the trio decide to take down Regina and put an end to the plastic's reign on their school. Four for Glen Coco! You go, Glen Coco! Glen Coco, Glen Coco, Glen Coco! And none for Gretchen Wieners, bye. The song has such a party vibe that even the most forgiving person may be convinced to join in. It only takes hearing the song once and you'll be on your feet. Because as Gretchen would say, it's so fetch. That is so fetch. Number 9. Do You Hear the People Sing? Les Miserables. When the beating of your heart echoes the beating of the drums, there is a life about to start when tomorrow comes. Yes, even a show called Les Miserables has the power to get us fired up. It is about a revolution, after all. Indeed, Do You Hear the People Sing has transcended Claude Michel Schoenberg and Alain Bouville's musical to become a worldwide symbol of protest, especially among marginalized groups. Do you hear the people sing, singing the song of angry men? It is the music. The steady beat grows louder and more forceful as the song progresses, giving us chills and filling our bodies with adrenaline. After hearing this song, we're ready to take a stand against whatever hardships life throws us. But if you still need more hyping up, might we recommend listening to One Day More and singing along as loud as you can. My place is here, I fight with you. Number 8. Spread the Love Around, Sister Act. Another finale song that will keep you smiling long after you've left the theater. Alan Menken sure knows how to write a song that gets audiences on their feet. And with a message of friendship, love, and acceptance, what's not to love? Dolores and the nuns realize that they have more that unites them than divides them. And it's their responsibility to put those positive vibes out there for the world to see. This song will inspire you to be your fabulous self and spread the love wherever you go.
Number seven, Defying Gravity, Wicked. Close my eyes and sleep. It's time to try Defying Gravity. Few Act One finales go as hard as this one. It's a pivotal scene in the show where Alphaba decides she's done with playing by the rules of someone else's game. It marks the moment she decides to fight back and refuses to settle. This is our go-to pump-up whenever we need a reminder that, if we put our minds to something, the possibilities are unlimited. It's so deeply moving that we feel like we could fly, much like Alphaba does during the song's climax. There's so much to love in this number, from the stunning composition to the non-compromising inspiration it instills in its listeners. Just instant chills. <laughs> Number six, Sincerely Me, Dear Evan Hansen. Dear Evan Hansen, we've been way too out of touch. Things have been crazy and it sucks that we don't talk that much. Sincerely Me is the catalyst for Evan's lie that spirals wildly out of control and takes center stage throughout the show. But despite its darker premise, its upbeat and playful melody is deceptively uplifting. Sure, there's some sketchy plot stuff happening, but all we really care about is how darn catchy this song is. Every day is getting better, every day! Hey, 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 hey! Cause all that it takes is a little reinvention. It's easy to change if you give it your According to SportsShoes.com, Sincerely Me cracked the top 10 most popular musical theater songs to feature on running playlists, a stat we can't say we're surprised by. A rocking beat with plenty of zest is likely to persuade even the most reluctant runner to break into a light jog. This song will leave you feeling charged. Sincerely, us. Number five, my shot, Hamilton. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. Lin Manuel Miranda knows a thing or two about writing songs that make you feel on top of the world. Only once we get going, we're never gonna stop tiptoeing. We'll get the dough, and once we get going, we're never gonna stop We'd barely finished dreaming about what we'd do with $96,000 before he had us pumped up with songs like Your Town, The World Turned Upside Down, and Non-Stop from the Hamilton soundtrack. However, if you're compiling a motivational theater playlist, might we suggest including My Shot? In the show, the characters perform this number while sharing their dreams and aspirations for the future. The message is universally relatable and will definitely inspire you to chase your dreams. We can't think of a better way to tell the world that you're not throwing away your shot. Number 4. Raise You Up, Just Be, Kinky Boots This song pretty much does what it says on the tin. The cast comes together for one of the most exhilarating finales to celebrate camaraderie, friendship, and never having to apologize for who you are. This song inspires everyone to just be who they want to be and never let anyone else make that decision for them. This uplifting tune is sure to put the biggest grin on your face and a bounce in your step. If 
your bubble busts or your glitter rusts, this song will certainly raise you up. Number three, so much better, Legally Blonde. Yes. L <laughs> <laughs> is heartbroken when Warner proposes to Vivian, but it's all quickly forgotten when Emmett shows her that she's one of the chosen few for Callahan's coveted internship. Whoa! He said my name up on that list. Does someone know that I exist? Is this a mistake? Am I even a from this moment, Elle realizes that she doesn't need Warner, and instead turns her sights to celebrating her own achievements, and learns that she can do so much better. It's a positive, up-tempo song with plenty of sass, and it will leave you bursting with energy and feeling like there's nothing you can't do if you set your mind to it. I am so much better than Number two, Seize the Day, Newsies. And a prayer becomes a vow. And a There's no denying that even the most mundane tasks can feel exciting with the right song. Newsies offers a plethora of energizing jams, including, but not limited to, Carrying the Banner, The World Will Know, and Once and for All. However, if you want to get really hyped, might we suggest blasting Seize the Day at full volume? Davy rallies everyone together to strike with this high-energy showstopper that leaves us out of breath just watching. Seize the day will leave you ready to march out the door and, you guessed it, seize the day. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Totally f***ed, Spring Awakening. A song to get you fired up when you want to stick it to the man. Tomorrow is A Latter Day, The Book of Mormon, a humorous and upbeat take on finding your cloud silver lining. Time Warp, The Rocky Horror Show. Jump to the left and then toward anything life throws your way. Oh, the blackness would hit me, and the void would be cold. December 1963, Oh What a Night, Jersey Boys. This song gives us a rush like a rolling ball of thunder. Friend Like Me, Aladdin. We ain't never had such a magical pump-up jam until Genie took on Broadway. Number one, you can't stop the beat. Hairspray. You can't stop the avalanches of braces down the hill. You can try to stop the seasons, girl, but you know you never will. Hairspray songwriters sure know how to leave their audience on a high by pulling out all the stops on this colorful finale. Oh, 
If you're looking for the ultimate pick-me-up, then this is your track. The song's message still rings true today as Tracy and her friends start the fight against intolerance and prejudice. And they all come together for one highly memorable showstopper in the end. We think it's high time we take a page out of Tracy's book and shake and shimmy with all of our might. Who wants to stop our dancing feet anyway? Okay, honestly, I really love Hairspray. There are actually so many great pump-up songs on that soundtrack. Speaking of which, you might also find Hairspray on this next list of annoyingly catchy Broadway songs. But when we say annoyingly catchy, we of course mean that in a loving way. The sun will come out tomorrow. No. Bet your Sit bottom down. dollar no, no. Hey, Annie, that Annie, Annie, tomorrow. Annie, 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 sweetie, not the time. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 annoyingly catchy Broadway songs. Embrace the cookie cutter into luck. We're all the same. The upshot is enormous when you can shout. Inform us. Yeah. For this list, we'll be looking at the most memorable show tunes that we just can't get out of our heads, no matter how hard we try. Which Broadway song do you accidentally find yourself humming? Number 10. My New Philosophy – You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown Although the musical You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown first debuted in the late 60s, this catchy little number didn't appear until the show was revived in 1999. Well, why are you telling me? What? Why are you telling me? Why are you telling me? I like it! That's a good philosophy. Popularized further by Kristen Chenoweth after her Tony performance, My New Philosophy will stick in your head like tape to paper. During the tune, Peanuts character Sally goes on and on about her perspectives on life after a bad grade pushes her to her breaking point. Just like a busy bee, each new philosophy can't fly from tree to tree and keep it. While it's a musical comedy staple, it can be overdone and overplayed in the wrong hands. However, Chenoweth won her first Tony Award for the role, so maybe Sally's on to something. For instance, Beethoven took over. No! I can't stand it! I can't stand it! I like it! It's like a guarantee, my new philosophy, and things are sure to be a whole lot brighter. Number 9. Turkey Lurkey Time. Promises, promises. <laughs> time to grab a plate and pull up a seat because. It's turkey, turkey time. Tom Turkey ran away, but he just came home. It's turkey, turkey time. He's really home to stay, never want to run. From the musical Promises Promises, this act has a song and dance that's sure to build up your appetite. Often mistaken for a tune about Thanksgiving, the number actually takes place during an office Christmas party. The fast-paced, high-energy, and rather strange ode to the poultry dish was crafted by Burt Bacharach and Hal David. Not only are the lyrics a bit of a head-scratcher, but the choreography takes things up several notches. Maybe it's the beat, or the way the words just roll off the tongue, but it's impossible not to sing along. Word to the wise, though, turkey lurkey at your own discretion, because those moves are no joke. Number 8. I Hope I Get It, A Chorus Line Turn, turn, touch, down, back step, pivot step, walk, 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 right. Okay, this is the whole combination, facing away from the mirror, from the top, a five, six, seven, eight! Featuring the most famous kick line in musical theater, a chorus line is a love letter to artists. 
In I Hope I Get It, a group of dancers prepare for the audition of their lives. After listening to the Marvin Hamlish composed tune just once, you'll have a hard time getting it out of your head. And the live version lasts a while, so there's plenty to jam along to. From the repetitive chanting to the infectious melody, it's no wonder this number has become one of Broadway's most exciting and memorable opening numbers ever. God, I hope I get it. I hope I get it. How many people does he need? How many people does he need? I hope I get it. I hope I get it. Number 7. It Sucks to Be Me, Avenue Q. So why don't I have a boyfriend? It sucks to be me. Me too. It sucks to be me. It sucks to be me. It sucks to be Brian. Let's face it, adulthood is downright scary, and nothing depicts that better than Broadway's Avenue Q. The comedic musical puppet show chronicles the lives of residents living in a fictional New York City neighborhood as they navigate the challenges of being grown-ups. It sucks to be me. No, it sucks to be me. It sucks to be me. Is there anybody here? It doesn't suck to be. It sucks to be me. During the first act number, It Sucks to Be Me, they compare how hard their lives are. After a few verses, the song's point is made, leaving fans to think, okay, we get it. Of course, it's innocently trying to point out how everyone has problems in their lives, but that doesn't make it any less repetitive or catchy. We're Number 6. La Vie Bohème, Rent. La vie. Picture this. You're sitting down for dinner at a New York City restaurant when a group of singing bohemian artists take over the joint. This is essentially the setup for Rent's Act One showstopper, La Vie Bohème. Ginsburg, Dylan, Cunningham, and Kate, Lenny Bruce, Langston Hughes, to the stage, to Utah, to Buddha, Pablo Neruda, to Led by the character of Mark Cohen, the ragtag bunch put on an impromptu performance, with nearly every cultural reference known to man. The lyrics are a mouthful and leave little room for breathing, but you'll find you're bobbing along once you memorize the words. However, for the sake of safety, maybe leave any table dancing to the professionals. Viva la vie, Number 5. Cell Block Tango, Chicago. And now, the six merry murderesses of the Cook County Jail in their rendition of uh, uh. the Cell Block Tango. One of the most popular selections from Chicago, Cell Block Tango is broody, dark, and provocative. Performed by the murderesses of Cook County Jail, the song documents how and why each lady committed the deadly act that led them there. Despite its violent imagery, it's incredibly compelling and addictive. He had it coming. He had it coming. It's hard not to hit the replay button as soon as the last line finishes. Is there anyone who can resist singing along to every masterful lyric? While we don't condone violence, we do love a good show tune that isn't afraid to get a little risque. Number 4. Shapoopy, The Music Man. Okay, what'll it be? The Shapoopy! <laughs> Now, woman who kissed on her very first date is usually a hussy. A true head spinner, Shapoopy is notoriously one of the musical theater's most relentless tunes. From its dizzying melody to its shrill sound, the song is pretty irksome all around. 
and the troubling lyrics do not help its case. The opening line features a problematic reference about women kissing on the first date, which is already an automatic red flag. Thankfully, the lyrics underwent a makeover for the 2022 Broadway revival with Sutton Foster and Hugh Jackman. But no matter how it's sung, the number still hits a nerve and leaves us wondering what Shapoopy even means by the end. Number 3. You Can't Stop the Beat – Hairspray The closing number of the smash hit musical Hairspray, You Can't Stop the Beat is truly infectious. As Tracy Turnblad and her pals move and groove to the upbeat and uplifting lyrics, it's nearly impossible to resist the urge to join them. It's so catchy that it even gets Tracy's mortal enemies, the Von Tussles, to get in on the action. Of course, it's all fun and games until the song is the only thing you can think about. Still, that's a small price to pay considering the tune can instantly boost any listener's mood. Number 2. Tomorrow, Annie. Just thinking about. Tomorrow clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow till there's none. Even if you're not a musical theater fan, chances are you know Tomorrow from Annie. Since the show debuted in the late 1970s, the song has become an anthem of optimism and hope. Come what may. The tune's overly sweet energy also makes it an easy target, so it's been parodied in everything from the film Dave to Saturday Night Live. Thanks to its super catchy melody and lyrics, it's also been known to cause a severe case of earworm in listeners. You can bet your bottom dollar that you'll be waking up singing this one tomorrow. Sun will come out tomorrow. Saying all of us, that's order from your commander in chief. Elena? I can't Stay sing. Say. Number one. Oh my god, you guys. Legally blonde. Full of glee, sass, and a sprinkling of joy, Legally Blonde's opening number is about as catchy as they come. Oh My God You Guys kicks off the stage adaptation of the 2000s rom-com classic, and is equal parts perfect and infectious. Features a pre Harvard Elle Woods and her Delta Nu sorority sisters preparing for her big day with her beau Warner. Part of the song's charm is that it's unapologetically fun and doesn't take itself too seriously. Even though it gets stuck in our heads for days on end, we can't help but love it. Fun fact. The first Broadway show I ever saw was actually Legally Blonde. But honestly, that was a very accurate list because all of those songs are super catchy. Now, Broadway songs can pump you up and be annoyingly catchy, but they can also be a great soundtrack for revenge. Here are some of the best Broadway revenge songs. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best Broadway revenge songs. If you weren't, if you hadn't, if you didn't, if you weren't, if you hadn't, if you didn't, weren't, you haven't, you went and you did, and so goodbye. 
For this list, we'll be looking at the fiercest, most satisfying, and most iconic show tunes about characters getting even. Did these revenge anthems have you singing and plotting along? Number 10. World Burn – Mean Girls I will grind you to sand beneath my Revenge seems to be on everyone's mind at this high school. The Mean Girls musical literally has a song called Revenge Party in it. It's a revenge party, a party that ends with somebody's head on a spike. But its most destructive and barn-burning act of revenge belongs to Regina George. In World Burn, she decides to light the match on the precarious high school social structure she once had firmly pinned under her pink Louboutin. Because you took me down, but you did! She delights in her villainy as she spreads the secrets and insults she and her clique of baddies have inscribed in their fabled burn book. Who doesn't love a good villain song? Especially when the villain is this fabulous. Number 9. Rose's Turn – Gypsy some people got it and make it pay. Some people can't even give it away. This people's got it. Mama Rose may be the stage mother from hell, but she's the role every Broadway actress would love to play. Her climactic number, Rose's Turn, is a big reason why. The song finds Rose admitting that she pushed her own show business dreams on her children and is embittered to find she's ended up alone because of it. All your life and what does it get you? Thanks a lot, out with the garbage. They take vows and you're back in zero. Instead of expressing regret, she can only see all that she sacrificed. It's as much a battle cry as it is a breakdown, and ultimately her determination to chase her own dreams rings hollow. The best thing about the song might be that every performer can find a unique way to carry it out. Number 8. Dance 10 Looks 3 – A Chorus Line I swiped my dance card, and on a scale of 1 to 10, they gave me for dance, 10. For looks, 3. Well, dance 10 looks 3. The show finds a group of dancers fighting to get into the chorus line of a major Broadway show. One dancer, Val, describes how her lack of certain physical attributes kept her from getting work, despite her talent. Her solution was a series of cosmetic procedures, and it did just the trick. Have it all done, honey, take my word. Grab a cab, come on, see the wizard on Park and 73rd. It might not work for other people, but Val seems to be doing just fine. After all, she's found the secret to success in show business. If you can't beat them, give them what they want. It's not exactly the empowering message of loving yourself for who you are, but a chorus line isn't exactly the most empowering musical around. Yes, yes, and yes, have Number 7. Pirate Jenny – The Three Penny Opera First performed in the original German production, this Kurt Weil and Bertolt Brecht song made its way to English via composer and librettist Mark Blitzstein. Pirate Jenny is the violent fantasy of a working-class maid who imagines what might happen if pirates sailed into shore. With its 50 guns firing at you from the key. Why, revenge, of course. She imagines in brutal and straightforward detail what it would feel like to take her vengeance on those who exploit her. The song has been covered by the likes of Nina Simone, Marianne Faithful, Judy Collins, and the Dresden Dolls. Asking me, kill them now or later. However, its original performer, Lotta Lenya, is said to have sung the definitive version. The Black Raider is 
disappears out to sea and on it is me. Number six, your obedient servant, Hamilton. Somehow endorsed Thomas Jefferson, his enemy, a man he's despised since the beginning. Just to keep me from winning, I wanna be in the room where it happens. After years of avoiding controversy and towing the line of respectability, Aaron Burr finds himself once again the object of Alexander Hamilton's scorn. This time, though, Burr has had enough. The song sees the vice president surrendering to his baser instincts and challenging his longtime rival to a duel that will have tragic consequences. The fact that the song is told mostly in letters doesn't cheapen its impact. Even if I said what you think I said, you would need to cite a more specific grievance. Here's an itemized list of 30 years of disagreements. Sweet Jesus. Hamilton doubles down on his insults, leaving the less witty and less savvy Burr with no other way of defending his pride but violence. Careful how you proceed, good man. Intemperate indeed, good man. Answer for the accusations I lay at your feet or prepare to bleed, good man. Knowing how it ends only makes it more thrilling to watch. I have the honor to be your obedient servant. A dot M. A dot Burr. Number five, so much better, legally blonde. A musical's first act closer should leave the audience clamoring for more, but it's a wonder Elle Woods' victory over her ex-boyfriend doesn't burn the theater down every night. So Much Better depicts the show's lovable and constantly underestimated law student, landing her dream internship. I've gone on to better things, better jobs, and bigger rings. I don't have the time to cry I'm too busy loving my name. She takes the opportunity to rub it in her ex's face and celebrate her own independence. But even as she takes jabs at him, the overarching feeling is hope for her future and a new burst of confidence. Like the show it comes from, it's sweet with a little spice and as hilarious as it is inspiring. Number four, get out and stay out, nine to five. You used me, abused me, you cheated and you lied. So get out and stay out, I'm taking back my life. The three leads of this workplace revenge musical comedy learn a lot over the course of the show. Mainly, they learn how to be independent working women who can hold down a job and hold their sexist boss hostage in his home. In this rousing penultimate number, Judy is able to tell the ex-husband who left her how much better her life is without him. Now that I'm unfed and unbound, out and stay out, I finally had enough. Get Out and Stay Out is a departure from the show's more laugh-a-minute numbers. It allows the least outspoken of the three leads to have a glorious moment of revelation. <laughs> Number three, Could I Leave You, Follies. Sweetheart, lover, could I recover? Give up the joys I have known Not to fetch your pills again Every day at five Phyllis is really having a rough time in Follies. The former chorus girl has swallowed so much of her own bitter resentment over the years that when her husband asks for a divorce, she actually seems ambivalent. Leave the lies ill-concealed And the wounds never healed And the game's not worth winning Oh wait, <laughs> I'm just beginning but as the song builds, she tears through a list of her gripes, her compromises, and her innermost desires with biting sarcasm and devastating clarity. Could I live through the pain on a terrace in Spain? Would it pass? 
it would pass. Could I bury my rage with a boy half your age in the grass? Ooh, bet your ass. The realization she comes to is that she may want out of their marriage even more than him. Yet, she will stay. I have to confess. Could I leave you? She's so elegant, though, that it makes feeling trapped in a marriage look almost unbearably chic. I yes. Number 2. Cell Block Tango, Chicago. I bet you, you would have done the same. Uh, a less remorseful group of killers you'll never see. Led by the cabaret singer and alleged murderer Velma Kelly, the six merry murderesses of the Cook County Jail sing, dance, and stage weirdly sexy recreations of their alleged crimes. But as they keep telling us, their, again, alleged victims really had it coming. It wasn't until later when I was washing the blood off my hands I even knew they were dead. They had it coming! They had it coming! They had Bob Fosse's timeless staging and Candor and Ebb's hilariously dark score make this fun revenge song an all-time classic. It remains an old standby for everyone, from Broadway ensembles to high school theater departments. Apparently, everyone loves a good, justifiable homicide number. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. So long, dearie. Hello, Dolly. Dolly tells Horace exactly where he can go. I'll be all dolled up and singing that song that says you dog. I told you so. So wave your little hand and whisper so long, dearie, dearie. Should have said so long, so long ago. Witches rap into the woods. Don't touch her greens. Greens, greens, and nothing but greens. Parsley, peppers, cabbages, and celery, asparagus, some watercress, some vinegars, and lettuce. He said, all right, but it wasn't quite, because I caught him in the autumn in my garden one night. Just you wait, my fair lady. Eliza imagines all the ways she could make Henry Higgins' life miserable. Just you wait in me, Higgins, just you wait. You'll be sorry, but your tears will be too light. Revolting Children, Matilda. The title really says it all. All I Ask of You, Reprise, The Phantom of the Opera. The Phantom doesn't take rejection well. You will curse the day you did not do. Oh, and the Phantom passed Number 1. Epiphany, Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. There's a hole in the world like a great black pit, and it's filled with people who are filled with shit, and the vermin of the world inhabit it. But not for long. This thrilling and terrifying first act song finds the London barber hell-bent on avenging the loss of his family. His solution? Declaring war on the whole human race, good, bad, rich, and poor alike. Because the lives of the wicked should be made brief, for the rest of us, death will be a relief. We all deserve to die. As the pie maker, Mrs. Lovett looks on in horror. Sweeney wrestles with his grief and rage. The music follows his lead, slowing and speeding up as his warring emotions fight for dominance. You, sir! Two, sir! Welcome to the grave! I will have vengeance! I will have salvation! Given the events of the rest of the play, it's safe to say the rage wins out. Epiphany is a heart-stopping solo and it feels like we're watching the man surrender himself completely to his quest for vengeance. But the work waits! I'm alive at last, and I'm full of joy! I 
love a good revenge song, don't you? And now that I've heard Cell Block Tango, I will have that in my head for the rest of the day, which is probably why it was also on annoyingly catchy Broadway songs. So, have you ever seen a show on Broadway? Or better yet, how many Broadway shows have you seen? As always, thank you for joining me on this dramatic journey through the WatchMojo archives. See you next time. Thank you.